Asalaamu Alaikum brothers and sisters. Uh, so today we're looking to hold uh, a series of videos uh, related to Makarim and the aim is to basically hold a Q&A session with the Sheikh who's leading Makarim and what we really are trying to do is create a better understanding for parents and for children related to how Makarim uh, is different from other madrasas and in particular what we're doing to help meeting the needs uh, for the children uh, in this day and age. There's a lot of issues that are going on uh, in modern society in the Western world and there's a lot of problems that they face and what we want to do is give you a better idea of how Makarim is handling it. Jazakallah khair. Hope you find these useful. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Jazakallah khair for doing this um, video series for uh, our community. Uh, just want to ask you a few questions regarding Makarim. Okay. So how has it been for the last year? What have we achieved the good points, the challenges, and what other things can we do better? So obviously we've, uh, we took, well, when I came in, you know, we combined the Madrasa in CMS, mm -hmm. right, and the Iqra Madrasa and turned it into one and that became Makari. So therefore it wasn't, we didn't have the, the advantage of starting something from scratch where you take your class ones, uh, only a class of a group of class ones teach them the curriculum then they go to class two and you recruit a new class of class ones and so mm -hmm. on. rather we had students of all ages coming in something like 150 students across two iterations and then we had to kind of fit them into all of the different age groups and so on so because of the, because of this this is quite a messy situation we we said that our first year would be a transitional year internally we decided that in that year we would establish our systems, we would work on our curriculum, and we would work on some, uh, we would work on identifying learning gaps in children, right? So, obviously, I, I come from an education background, I've been working in education for 20 years, so I come at it from, come at it from that perspective. You know, I have an understanding of what a child should know at a particular age, and what the important priorities are, and what we can realistically achieve within one year. Based on that, we said that this first year would be a transitional year, and we would focus on a few key things. Um, identify learning gaps, mm -hmm. and based on that, basically teach the children. Have, a, have, a, have an Islamic studies program based on some of the established textbooks that are out there, while in the background we continue to work on our own kind of unique Macadam Academy curriculum. And then most importantly, focus on uh, correcting children's recitation. Now, people receive this message in different ways. I just want people to receive it with an open heart and mm -hmm. just un understanding the importance of this from the perspective of Islam, not from the perspective of how we feel about things, not from the perspective of how things have been in the past and what we've experienced, etc. From the point of view of Islam and what the Sharia has to say, and I'm happy to have conversation with people about this. Mm -hmm. But the truth from an Islamic and Sharia perspective is that the standard of Quran recitation that, 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 that we, we had required a lot more mm -hmm. improvement. Mm -hmm. So if, if there was an a, a, a easy to identify learning gap that had to be addressed straight away, it was, it was basically the children's Quran recitation. Now, in my opinion, that's an important priority, but the, not the only one. Mm -hmm. But it's a priority that everybody understands, is prominent in everyone's minds. Mm -hmm. What we had was children of different ages who had made a certain amount of progress in Qaeda, um, Juz Amma, in Quran, some children who had finished reciting the Quran, right? But whose recitation, the standard of recitation was poor when it, from a Tajweed point of view, right? Now, a lot of people don't understand, you know, what we mean by Tajweed and so on and what the Islamic position of, is of Tajweed. What is the Islamic ruling regarding Tajweed? Tajweed is to recite the Quran correctly. And the, the ulama say correctly as revealed to the Prophet so, so. As revealed to the Prophet right? mm. And we had a lot of work to do in this area. This basically, you know, there was, in terms of things were particularly weak. And this is quite common in towns mm. outside of the big cities, right? You know, developments in Tajweed and so on we've, that we've seen over the last 20 years in, say, places like London. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't spread out to smaller towns, right? It mm -hmm. requires some sort of concerted effort to fix it. So I thought we would start that, right? That mm -hmm. concerted effort. So we, you know, we we started we started two key things. One is we 
started the children back, you know, right from the alpha, alphabet, we started to build up their recitation based on Tajweed, mm -hmm. right? Secondly, we started, we wanted to make sure that teachers also were all pursuing the same standard. So we started a rigorous teacher training program. All mm -hmm. teachers went through two hours worth of training every single week for the whole year to ensure mm -hmm. that the standards that we were achieving was, was a standard that, that everybody basically practically understood right because that was, a, that was a big problem Sheikh, because in london you have so many ulamas but right? like chefs who don't, don't so yeah. that was a very yeah and it's very, nobody's fault no I mean, no exactly you, you yeah, think exactly. about sometimes sometimes people feel like oh have, have we been doing things wrong all this mm -hmm. time etc etc no, no. it's nobody's fault it's just you know development takes time, time yeah. right and there are certain in, in in a lot of the a lot of the cities have the populations mm -hmm. and a lot of the ulama that have improved tajweed for example around the country mm -hmm. have been concentrated in the big cities right yeah and then uh, you know uh, some of that doesn't that doesn't spill over onto onto smaller towns and smaller towns the masjids you often don't have capacity mm -hmm. even if you have ulama they're not available to work in your own masjid often, true, which true, is what, true. which is what we've what, we, what i came and found in in chelmsford so anyway um so that, that was the thing now why is this important right mm -hmm. and we had to do a workshop with parents for this why is this important well because it is obligatory. It's obligatory to recite the Quran with Tajweed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter what, how we feel about it. That is what is expected. That is what our religion, our Deen, expects of us that we recite the Quran with Tajweed. Now there is a minimum and a maximum, mm -hmm. right? Now the minimum for people who struggle, etc., etc. So the minimum is for them. But in education, if you're trying to educate children in mathematics, you don't aim for the minimum, do you? No. You aim. For the maximum. Right? Yeah. So similarly, if 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 I'm trying to help somebody just fulfill the fara'id of their salah, then I'll just I'll fix their fatiha minimally if I don't have time with them. Mm -hmm. But if I have children who I have two, three, four, five, six, seven years with, mm -hmm. then we have to aim to achieve the near highest. perfection, mm -hmm. right? the highest standard possible. And that's what we're trying. That's what we are, we are aiming for. The first step, and this was a test of people's patience. The first steps was the basic foundational building blocks, making sure that children could pronounce the alphabet correctly, mm -hmm. you know, uh, pronouncing the letter. So, like, you know, Ali, they, they would have been used to Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Ha, Dal, Zal, Zal, you know, we taught them to say Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Ha, every single letter, and then taught them to pronounce that with a, with, with a Fatha, a Zabar, mm -hmm. then with a Kasra, with a Zayr, and etc., etc., all of the different formulations. They basically went through the whole of the Qaeda, even though they were on Quran before. Mm -hmm. we, we went through the whole of the Qaeda with Tajweed, and then built them back onto the Quran. So, Sheikh, okay, can you give us an example whereby uh, a slight variation of when if you um, uh, make something long, the way where it's supposed to be short or vice versa, or the pronunciation of different letters, how how do they change? I mean, there's can you there's two example? parts to it, right? The, the, so, some, first and foremost, if you make pronunciation mistakes, mm -hmm. right, then there's agreement among ulama that a pronunciation mistake is a major mistake. Mm -hmm. The problem, generally, culturally, what what happens is people assume that if I say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamun. Mm -hmm. instead of alameen, then that's a major mistake. Mm -hmm. But it never occurs to us that if I say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen instead of alameen, then that's also a major mistake. This is the issue. The Hamza and the Ayn. The ham Hamza and the Ayn. If you say, if you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen instead of Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, it doesn't occur to us that that's a major mistake. So mm -hmm. what then happens is it just we've fallen into this kind of situation where not only will we not give it importance, mm -hmm. even a teacher won't correct that mistake. Mm -hmm. But if the child said Alhumdu instead of Alhamdu, that would be corrected. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big mistake, right? And this is the issue. That's where things have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamun is as much a major mistake as saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, this is an example of mistakes where you might not be able to associate a meaning, or you know, the meaning may or may not have altered. Mm -hmm. There are other clear examples where meanings get altered. If you say, if you say, Kul hu Allahu ahad, right, instead of, Ul hu Allahu ahad, then, Ul hu Allahu ahad with a qaf means, say Allah is one. Kul hu Allahu ahad means, eat Allah is one. Subhanallah. Kul means, say, mm -hmm. Kul means, eat. Subhanallah. Right, so so sometimes, so that's an example of a meaning altering error. 
But my point is, even if the meaning isn't altered, mm -hmm. the error is still a major error. Mm -hmm. And and while people individually make these mistakes, in those situations, of course, we accept Allah for forgiveness. Who doesn't make mistakes? Yeah. What isn't acceptable is to accept a situation where structurally we are teaching mm -hmm. mistakes. Okay. Right? Cool. That mistakes are not picked up on when children make mistakes. That's problematic. You think about it as a Muslim community. Would we accept that if our children were taught like that in school? In the English reading. Right? Yeah. If our children were in, 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 were in English reading were taught in such a way that their mistakes weren't even corrected, mm -hmm. their pronunciation mistakes weren't even corrected, would we accept that? No. no. Then why would we accept it? With Quran. Uh, Qur Allah's words. With Allah's Allah's words. words yeah. So this, I thought that was a fundamental priority, and that's what we focused on in the first year. And Alhamdulillah, that's gone really well. About... We probably took back what, about what are the stats on that? Yeah, I think I think probably around sixty children were taken back who were already on Quran. Okay, and then obviously the rest of the children were starting from various places who were, who we were class as beginners, mm -hmm. and somewhere in the region of twenty-five to thirty children have come back onto Quran. Mashallah. And I reckon first term next year, mm -hmm. we should expect, you know, all if not most of the children who are taken back in Quran to 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 go. Uh, to, to go back onto Qaeda, to go back onto Quran. But what's really exciting, what I'm really excited about is that, and I, I did some videos to, to kind of sh show people, and um, this rumor spread, oh, you know, um, the Makadim is just showcasing the really, really good children. Yeah. So what I want to really share with the community is that th these are not outliers. This is not an exception. Mm -hmm. the, the, the standard that you see in one child mm -hmm. is what we are pushing in every child. Sure. Right? So when we get to a stage where our children are reciting well, you can pick one out of a bunch and they will all recite equally well. So sure. that's what we're trying to get to, inshallah. Before you progress them under the Quran, the yeah. last half. Before, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. the point yeah. is that, look, as far as I'm concerned, when, 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 like, if you ask me this question, right, when, when, when can I, when, can I consider my child to have completed their Quran education? Right? Mm -hmm. What is the answer to that question? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, for a lot of people, my child's Quran education is completed when he's done a khatam. Or like, completing a khatam is a major milestone. Mm -hmm. You understand? My answer to that question is that a child's Quran education, as in, in terms of when I would, would be safe to say, okay, you can carry on on your own now. Right? Mm -hmm is that they are able to recite the Qur'an fluently with perfect tajweed. What that means is tajweed becomes second nature. Like when I recite, for example, I don't have to think mm. about a ghunna. I don't have to think about my pronunciation. Ayn comes naturally. Ha comes naturally. Qaf comes naturally. Saad comes naturally. Right? Mm. When a child develops that natural ability with pronunciation, and all the tajweed rules become embedded in their recitation, and then they're able to apply it fluently, that's when, that's when they reach a position where we can say, okay, now they can go ahead and recite on their own, and we, will, we are confident that they will recite correctly. What's the alternative? That we don't correct these things, and we say, is that a khatam? What does that mean? It means that child is going to recite the Quran incorrectly. You just graduated him or her. That child will recite the Quran incorrectly for the rest of his or, his or her life. In the other scenario, that child will recite the Quran correctly, right, for the rest of his or her life. So a little bit of pain now, uh, exactly. unlimited gain. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I, 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 I'm teaching a few adults myself, and after a certain age, it's very, very difficult to get them to recite Quran. Yeah. I, I, it's very difficult. Yeah. So, so another, I'll give you another little observation. So the children who found it the most difficult were the oldest children. Mm. So the whole process of correcting pronunciation the children that found it the most difficult were the oldest children because they had they had the most embedded ha habits. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So if a child cannot pronounce Ayn, he's not been able to pronounce. He's been pronouncing it incorrectly for seven, eight years, right? If he's 14 years old. Mm -hmm. if, if a, if a, um, if a, like one of the real, big, one of the big, dif big difficulties that we have is with heavy letters. Mm -hmm. Like a sword is supposed to be pronounced from the tongue, not from the lips. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get children to practice that, right? Mm -hmm. That don't say swad. Is swad. Children struggle with that. All the children struggle with that because they've been saying swad for five years. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are, it was the, the toughest with them. You know, their progress took off right at the end of the year. So right. But you know, the good news is we expect them to be recited. We expect them to be recited, reciting to a very high standard. Do you understand? 
um, next year within uh, you know the second term we should expect some of the children who got onto Quran in, in, uh, in the, at the end of this year to be reciting at a very high standard. So can, when you say high standards, can we expect our children to recite like the Imams of Makkah and Medina, same standard? That, that's a good in, in, so, in, so, 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 so we have to differentiate between tune mm -hmm. and melody mm -hmm. and correctness. I will want, I will definitely say that, that while I am involved, while I am here, mm -hmm. it, it, will be, it will be an expectation that our children recite to that quality. Tune and melody is a matter yeah. of yeah. personal gift. You mm -hmm. know, some people are gifted with a great voice. Mm -hmm. I will never sound like Abdul Rahman today. I don't have his voice, mm -hmm. but I can recite as correctly as him. Mashallah. That I can guarantee. And that's the standard we're going for. That's the standard we're going for. Yeah, sure, for me personally, if we can get all of our children, especially in Makaria and in Chelmsford, to recite to the standard, it's, an, it's a huge achievement because then, for inshallah, until akhirah, we maintain that standard. Anyone coming to recite, you know, people will say. And, and I want the community to understand that this is not <coughs> difficult. You know, when I first started talking about this, people looked at me as though I was, I was promising the impossible. Not only is this possible, this is actually fairly easy. It is actually easy to do. Mm -hmm. The reason why we haven't been doing it is because we've just fallen into bad habits. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? This is actually, this is, of all of the things that I want to achieve with Makarim, mm -hmm. this is probably the easiest one to achieve. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. I mean, with next question, maybe we'll let's listen to the complex stuff, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 